If your spouse has checked out or they're even filing for divorce or want to leave, one of the helpful pieces of information that I've given over the years to, couple, to individuals who've contacted me is that is the concept of the 180. Um, this was created by uh, Michelle Wiener Davis of Divorce Busting fame. And I, I have a dis- disclaimer for it. I always tell, tell people who call me about it. I said, you know, you really have to decide if you're willing to do this because basically the 180 means you're taking a 180 turn. They're essentially playing hard to get. And the hope is that if you do this, your partner might realize, oh, you're dependent. You're not dependent on me. You're, <clears throat> you're confident. You can be on your own. You don't need me. And then they actually want to come back to you. There's something about being needy and dependent on them actually can push them away. So we want to read a few of the different things that are in, in, that this entails, this 180 entails, and then we can talk a little bit more about it. So here's some things that are recommended during the 180. Don't pursue a reason, chase, beg, plead, or implore. No frequent phone calls. Don't talk about the good points in the marriage. Don't follow, don't follow them around the house. Don't follow them to the bathroom. Um, don't encourage discussions about the future. Don't ask for family members to help out, like your partner's family members, to get involved. Don't ask for reinsur- reassurances that things will be okay. Don't try to buy their, your way back by giving them gifts. Don't schedule dates. Don't say, I love you. Um, actually start moving on with your life. Don't just act as if, but actually do it. Be cheerful, strong, outgoing, and independent. Don't sit around waiting for your spouse. Just you know, get busy. Do things. Go out with your friends. Enjoy your old hobbies. Make sure you're busy. When they are still home with you, don't talk too much. Don't push any issue, even if you want to. Um, if you ask your spouse you know, where they're going, just don't ask anything. Be disinterested. Uh, so one of the things to say is that you, your partner, who is your wayward partner, they need to really feel that you've kind of gotten picture, the clear of this picture and awakened to the fact that they're done. Uh, they're, serious concern, they're seriously considered leaving the relationship. So you're showing that, okay, fine. I'm going to just move on then without you. Um, at the same time, we don't want to be cold, nasty, or angry. Just pull away. Uh, don't be so available as you might. Um, another thing is, no matter how you're feeling, try to be happy towards your spouse and, and content. Be somebody that they want to be around. If you're moody, you're needy, you're pathetic, you're, you know, they're not going to want to be around you. Uh, don't ask them any questions about what they want to do about the relationship until they want to talk about it. Don't lose your, lose your tempo, temper. Don't name call. Don't be too excited either. Um, don't argue when they share with your feelings. Listen carefully to what they're saying to you. Um, keep your mouth shut. Take care of yourself. Exercise, sleep, laugh. Be confident. And you know, there's a few more things here. But just keep moving forward. So I find this, is, this has been quite helpful to a lot of people. They found that when they've done this, when they've showed that they can be just kind of laid off their spouse and they can show that they can be independent, then their spouse starts feeling that, oh, well, you know, it's like hard to get. You're, you know, they're more attracted if they, if they can't just easily have you. But again, you want to think about this because it is extremely hard to do. And there is the risk that, you know, I guess the thought is basically this. If you're being threatened, if your spouse wants to leave, so you could either just say, okay, fine, do what you need to do. And it might look like you're kind of agreeing with them and consenting to what they want to do. And then they actually go ahead and do it. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want them to think that they're actually giving in or that you, that you actually want them to continue doing it. So that is one risk that you have. Um, there's also, I guess, the thought that you think that maybe there is something that I can do. Maybe if I work hard enough, maybe if I convince them to get help, maybe they will turn around. So just to kind of check out and, and not do anything and not show any interest, could show your, could, could, you could miss out on that opportunity to save the relationship. So it's kind of a difficult call. I mean, I would say that 
if you're in a situation where they've already filed for divorce papers and you're begging and pleading and they're not doing anything and they refuse to get help and they refuse to reconsider and you have no other course of action, then in this case, this might be your best course of action because there's really nothing else you can do. If you're in the early stage where they're not sure what they want to do, um, you might want to just think long and hard and see, is this really going to work or is this going to backfire? Is my spouse going to actually get it? Are they going to realize that I'm not trying to tell them that I want them to leave, but I just want to let them know that I don't, you know, if, if they want to leave, you know, I can be a big boy or a big girl and I can deal with it and I can be happy and, you know, I don't need them. So it is something that, you know, use your discretion and think about whether you're comfortable doing it and whether there might be a possibility to get your spouse on board towards working on their relationship. And if that's not the case and you have no other course of action, this might be the only thing to do because you really don't have anything to lose at that point. Once divorce papers are filed or once they're completely done, uh, or if there's an affair. Um, a lot of times, if there's an affair, it's extremely hard to get them to come back, especially when you're, they're having that emotional attachment to somebody else. So you really have nothing else to lose. So sometimes doing the 180 is really the answer. We'd love to hear from you, any of you who try this to see your experience, but we have found some very positive results, and we do feel it's really important to share it with you because it is a, a different way of going about winning your spouse back.